Uh, Take your Bible and turn to Hebrews chapter 2, please. Meredith was just playing uh, Ship Ahoy, right? No? Hold on. What what, what was the song? What? Haven of Rest. Oh, never mind. That's sort of like Ship Ahoy. Now I'm all embarrassed I have to leave. (laughs) All right, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, please. Well, I knew it. Man, we had a nice, cool um, spring, and it was gorgeous. I was just talking about the good weather last week, or Wednesday, I think, and I knew it was going to go straight to 90. Just There's no in-between. It's just straight to 90. Uh, but uh, we praise the Lord for it all, right? We get to change the seasons, and it's, it's good. It's good. All right. Um, Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, and uh, verse 1. Verse 1, please, please. It says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time uh, we should let them slip. And let's pray. Father, as we come to you this morning, we're sure grateful to be in thy house with thy people. And Lord, we're, we are truly grateful that you've give us, given us your um, holy and inspired word. Um, God, it's perfect, and we thank you for this, that we can trust it and trust you. And uh, we ask for your blessing, please, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, I've uh, mentioned some of these things before, but I just couldn't get away from them uh, this week. Um, and so I'd like to share some th- thoughts with you on our Christian life. And uh, I'm just going to assume you're saved this morning. I don't know. It's good to have the dyes with us. Uh, so uh, some folks recognize them from camp. And uh, both of you from camp? Yes. Okay. And uh, junior camp, and um, so Brother Rich speaks very highly of you, uh, so we're glad you're here. They're on a vacation and just passing through, amen? With a, I said they, I, I know they're here on purpose because you don't pass through here unless you're coming here on vacation. And uh, in fact, when you know about the place, most people just kind of ride around it, you know, just keep on going, but we're glad you're here this morning. God bless you. All right. Um, Hebrews chapter 2, as we think about this, it says uh, that we should let them slip. Let them slip. Uh, I read a story years ago about um, uh, a couple young boys, and um, they're on this river not, not too far from where they lived, and, and uh, they were fishing, and uh, evidently they were uh, catching uh, fish. You can't always catch fish when you fish. And they were catching fish, and they got caught up in, in the fishing, and didn't realize they were drifting. And uh, and then they um, downstream, uh, there was a uh, waterfall. And by the time they heard the waterfall, it was too late. And um, you know, and days later, they they found their bodies, and and uh, they just didn't know where they were. And as a Christian, sometimes we can do that, and we can just start drifting. And I'd like to share some thoughts with you this morning um, on this. So are you drifting? Are you drifting? Um, There's some things that uh, I think we should understand about drifting. You know, Mrs. Uh, Bromley was just um, talking to me about some thoughts that she had on Wednesday's Bible study, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, but you know, she, she was talking about some things about marriage and, and, uh, the seed and where we are in our Christian life or where the seed falls in our hearts. And, and, um, you know, I was thinking about when she was saying that, that God makes, God made marriage, God made, uh, seeds that go in the ground, God made the dirt and every, every illustration. And, you know, Jesus would give illustrations of us and sheep and, God made it all, so it's not a coincidence. Hey, you're, you guys are just like sheep. You know, it's not a coincidence. God made everything, and so it's all for a purpose and all for a reason. And as we think about 
Uh, you know, I was thinking about the water and drifting and all that is, is God's in all that. And, and we, should, we should see God in all that. And as, as the Lord gave illustrations from, from things in nature and plants and trees, and, and the same thing is true for us. So let's think about us uh, as Christians and uh, drifting, drifting. Um, as we look here in, um, as we think about here in, in Hebrews, uh, some things about drifting. Drifting requires no effort. No effort at all. Um, in fact, uh, to stop from uh, drifting, we have to row, we have to work at it to make sure we're not drifting. All we have to do to drift is just stop. If we just stop. Now, I'm not a waterman. Um, I did have a canoe one time, but I'm not a waterman. Uh, but I know that... Uh, you know, you have, to make, you have to make things happen in the water. You have to plan on where you want to be because water moves you. Water takes you. And it takes no effort at all. The Bible says here in Hebrews that we just read, um, we ought to give the more earnest heed or pay attention uh, to the things which we have heard. And let's talk about the things that we know, the things that, that are already in our heart, the things that we've learned, the truths that we know from the word of God. It says, lest at any time... Um, we should let them slip. And the thought there is just, it just, it'll drift away. And, uh, and the only way that doesn't happen is if we're paying attention, attention we're, we're giving earnest heed to what we already know. One thing is, one thing as a Christian is to learn what God says, and another is just remembering it, just not letting it go. How many times... Have you seen somebody do something and, and your thoughts are, they know better? Of course we do. Of course we do. Uh, it's just keeping what we know. So it requires no effort at all. And I, I thought about this. So what has Rick Connor done um, in the last six months? What effort have I made to not drift? What effort have you made to not let go? Uh, we, can't just, we can't just coast along in our Christian life. We have to put effort into it. And uh, just because we did last month doesn't mean that, that doesn't count. We have to continue. So let's go, go on. Okay. Um, drifting requires no effort. And we could, um, everything we do is on purpose, but we could just kind of check out. Uh, it be an unconscious process. I was thinking about drifting for a boat. Um, like I said, you could, you could be in a boat and just start moving, and you don't even really feel it. But you are. You might not notice it from the surface, but that undercurrent is just moving you. Uh, I know for a fact, uh, in a car, you can drift. And when, when do we drift in the car? when we're not paying attention to driving, right? Uh, I, I heard uh, something on the radio this week, uh, and they were, um, they were saying you cannot, and I know some of you are going to say you can, but they said it's impossible to, to think about two things at the same time. Now, some people are I can do that. I can multitask. Maybe you, you can switch back and forth. I know I can't think about two things at the same time. I know it. Um, and uh, they said you cannot, but it's, it's impossible to think of two thoughts at the same time. You have to switch it back and forth. But, um, and that, that's the same for driving. That's what I said all that to say. When I'm driving, if I start thinking about something else or looking at something else, uh, uh, I praise the Lord for those rumble strips. I mean, they are the best. I remember when they started doing that, I said, this is fantastic. Uh, and, you know, but uh, hey, listen, and you think you're okay, you're moving along, uh, and you think you're okay, but then you realize you're drifting. You're drifting, or your wife might say something. That, that happens, you know, that can happen too, some say. Hey, listen, as a Christian, we slowly drift from God. It's never, uh, it's never an, uh, a, a, a sudden thing. And you, you, know, you might see somebody, and they've all, all of a sudden they're gone, but th that didn't happen slowly. And uh, as Christians, we can drift. Churches can drift. 
uh, you know, good uh, churches or Bible colleges or some Christian institution, they can drift and not be what they used to be. And here's another thing. We never, ever drift upstream. When things, when uh, you think about music, it never changes. If you just let it go, it never gets stronger for the Lord. Uh, you think about anything, uh, any, 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 any improvement that uh, um, we try to make is, and, and get away from the things of God, it, it goes downhill. It doesn't go uphill. And as Christians, if we just let go, we're not going to get stronger. We're not going to get better. If we just let go and, and try to coast, and, and it can happen in families. You know, if you have a good family, you just kind of, just kind of, you're just riding a ride. But you're not getting stronger. You have to do that on purpose. It takes no effort. You're not going to go upstream uh, without even putting any thought into it. And that's the danger of not putting thought into it. Um, we never grow, up, grow upstream. Faithfulness to the Lord is work. And, and if you, you know, ruin that, ruin that, those, those oars, I never did two at the same time, but one, hey, listen, it's work. It's work. Uh, take your Bible, if you would, please, turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, please. Give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, the things we already know, lest at any time we should let them slip. Are you closer to God or further away? Are you saying things aren't just, they're just not the same and, you know, you don't get thrilled about the things you used to of the Lord? Uh, are you closer or further away? Second, uh, Peter chapter 1, um, and verse 5, please, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5. It says, beside this, giving all diligence. And again, that's, that's just work. Sticking to it, uh, diligence. Add to your faith. See, that's the Christian life. It's an adding thing. A growing, adding, that's the Lord wants us to do that. Add to your faith, virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. Add those things and add to those things. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, uh, charity. For if these things be in you, and how do they get there? You have to add them. If you're coasting, they're not going to be in you. You have to put them there. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall, um, that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we were studying uh, Wednesday. One of, the, one of the seeds falls on a certain ground and it becomes fruitful. Only one of three. And God says here, uh, uh, we need to be fruitful. Um, and then verse 9, it says, He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar and hath what? Forgotten. They slipped. He's drifted. Uh, he's forgotten. It's not that he didn't know them. It's not that he never heard it. It's not that he wasn't taught or raised in it. Um, he let them slip. Um, that he was purged from his old sins. I'm going to pray. We have a special, right? Huh? Oh, can you go get him? We'll do that when you get here. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I do that. Okay, look at 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and uh, verse 18. So God says, give all diligence, add uh, 
you know, uh, the, the one that's blind and cannot see is the guy who forgot, right? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Verse 18, please. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow. Add. Uh, diligence. This is work. And... Um, and I know you work all week and, and all this. Hey, listen, work. We have put effort in our Christian life. And then I, I thought, how much effort have I put in to my walk with God? Um, and hey, listen, uh, effort doesn't make you a Christian, but as a Christian, we have to desire those things. So let's pray, and we're going to have a special in song, right? Thank you for your patience, too. Amen. Father, we sure love you, and God, we pr pray that you bless now as uh, this is offered to you, please. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I appreciate everybody's patience here. Thank you. All right. Are you with me still? Are we still together? Okay. All right. Um, so uh, drifting requires no effort. Um, we don't even have to think about it. It never, uh, we never drift up, upstream and uh, we must continue to grow. Okay, work at it. Okay, or or row, 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 row your boat, right? <laughs> Diligently up the stream. Okay, Hebrews chapter two. As we think about this, it says, "Lest uh, we let them slip." Right? Now think about this: if you're drifting and you're on a, a stream, and uh, if you've ever done that, you know you move without knowing you're moving, and uh, then as you go as as you go downstream some you realize that things start moving faster they start moving faster uh, the speed increases as you get further away um, the drifting speed increases you start off real slow and then the further away you get the faster you start going in that direction. Um, but hey, listen, when you hear the noise of the waterfall, it's too late. You think about this too. When you're drifting, I don't know, if you've ever done that, you kind of, you realize where you are, and if you lose sight of land, if you lose orientation, it's harder to come back. It's not impossible. But the further away you go, and the less you recognize things, um, the harder it is to come back. You know, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, the church has changed. And I'm thinking, I don't think we have. But they've changed where they don't recognize things anymore. And hey, listen, are we drifting? Are we drifting? You know, at first you don't see it. You don't even notice it. Um, but are we drifting? As we move further and further away, we care less and less. As we, fur as we, as we move further and further away from God, as we move further and further away from the things of God and the people of God, we, we, um, we just care less and less. The distance makes us distant. Take your Bible, if you would, please. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, please. Ephesians chapter 4. You think about this, too. Um, I like watching, uh, you know, every now and then I watch these videos of crashes. I don't know why I like them, but it's just, I, I feel bad about it, but, you know, it's, a, it's incredible, you know, those kind of crashes and how much damage they do. And, and um, I've, I've seen some on ships, and they're not always, uh, you know, going into something full speed. A lot of times it's just when they drift and, and and when a ship is drifting, it causes some serious danger, uh, damage. You know, a big giant ship can just uh, drift into a dock, or and it just it just takes out whatever. Or when they drift into other ships, um, they cause a lot of damage. You know what? And when we drift, we can cause a lot of damage. Uh, we don't plan on it. We don't mean it. But there we are. We're just we're in that place, and uh, we can really hurt people in a lot of ways. Uh, the Bible says I was thinking about a parent who uh, who is drifting, um, can lose a lot of things, and one of the things that we can lose if your children are young is you lose that opportunity. You only give them for that window of time. Right, uh, uh, it seems like you have them forever, but boom, they're grown, and you get them for a little window of time. Hey, listen, if your kids are little, 
or you still have them, uh, you should be thinking, you know, you're not going to do this forever. You should be thinking, what can I do to help them uh, and, and to be there for them? Because you only get a window, you only get that little window of time, and then it's gone. The Bible says here in uh, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter uh, 6 and verse 4, what did I say? Four. That's what we're turning to next, okay? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. It says, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Um, you know, when you're, when you're grown and, and, uh, and your kids are grown, you can look back on a lot of things that you could have done a lot better. Um, and so just take it from us that have already been there that when you're when you have your children don't drift do your best do your best not to drift and uh and uh seize upon that moment the bible says if you would please turn to ephesians chapter 4 now ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14 It says that we henceforth be no more children uh, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men uh, and cunning craftiness whereby uh, they lay in wait to deceive us. And the thought there, tossed to and fro, is just you're carried with the wind. And, you know, as Christians, we need to put down anchors. And, uh, hey, listen, that we could be uh, taken and when we forget the things that we've learned and the things that we know and the things that we've been uh, uh, grounded in, but we can forget them and just start drifting. And drifting, uh, eventually it's going to end up in shipwreck. Depends on where you are and how far you got to go and then how fast you start moving, but we'll end up in shipwreck. Uh, turn back to Hebrews chapter 2, please. Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, we're going to read a couple other verses there. In Hebrews chapter 2. You know, a boat drifting eventually is going to hit rocks or, um, or go over the edge, but it's going to hit something sooner or later. And uh, look at this. <clears throat> In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Again, it's not new. It's the things that we know. And actually, we can, um, um, they, they can become just old hat to where we don't think about them. We don't consider them. And I think we, and in that, is the danger of drifting when great things are just, you know, I've read that before, I've heard that before, and then it doesn't mean anything to us anymore. And it says, because when that happens, lest at any time we should let them slip. Then look at verse 2, please. For if the word spoken by the angels was, was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward. In other words, there's a price for slipping. There's a price for slipping. Verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And hey, listen, it's not talking to lost people. It's talking to us that if we're saved, we, we have this great salvation uh, <clears throat> It's a sin to just let it go. I mean, it doesn't mean you'll be unsaved, but you'll waste your life in drifting. Uh, one time, years ago, Zach was, we were at Goose Creek. Our, our church used to camp, have these campouts at Goose Creek. And uh, we would get, um, uh, I think, two or three spots 
you know, you can only ha you have to have so many tents in certain spots. We could we had these two or three spots, and we'd have like 40 people there, and uh, it was great. It was great, great days. And um, we used to have this one place that we would try to get every time, and the water was real shallow there. We could walk out and go crabbing and and do different things like that. And um, and uh, I had a canoe then, and one time I was in the canoe, and I, the canoe drifts I mean, easily. It just, and uh, then the next thing you know, I was out in the middle, and, um, and then all of a sudden, a storm was coming up, and, um, and it was starting to lightning, and I was in this little metal canoe out in the, in the middle of nowhere, and, um, and Zach, our son Zach, he was probably seven or eight then, and uh, he started screaming, Dad, Dad, you're in danger. And, uh, you know, then I realized where we were. And, um, and then I started rowing, and the wind kicked, started kicking up. And uh, I could move. And, and uh, you know, and I was out there, and then Zach uh, started swimming toward me to save me. And, uh, and then I was trying to get to him, and he's swimming, and he's like, dad, dad, dad. And, uh, you know, but he, he, was, he was trying to save me because he saw I was drifting. And I thought maybe, maybe um, there's somebody that you know is drifting, and uh, maybe God would have you uh, to reach out to them and try to help them. Uh, but hey, listen, we can drift, and, and normally when we do drift, we don't w realize where we are, and, um, and God wants to help us with that. Let me just share one thing with you after this. Um, there's, some, there's some signs of drifting, common signs of drifting. Uh, take your Bible, if you would, please. Turn to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1, please. You know, the Bible tells us of sin and the consequences of sin. Uh, the Bible tells us how Jesus loves us and how he saves us. It gives us instruction uh, for um, living right and how to be happy and useful and, um, um, and um, fruitful. In Psalm chapter 1, Psalm chapter 1, please, and uh, look at verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know what? We've, we all know that, right? We've heard that. We've read that. Many of us have memorized these verses. We know that. The Bible says in verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And we know that too, right? We know that. We've heard it. We've memorized the verses. Uh, we've read verses about that. We know that, that the Bible and the word of God is the key. We know that uh, getting away from the, the Lord and going back to the old ways and the old crowd and, and getting involved in things like that, uh, happiness is not there. But how many times have we drifted there? Or drifted away from this law of the Lord that we know about? How many of us have, have uh, missed time with God this week already? You say, well, I didn't mean to. I really wasn't thinking about it. I was busy. You know what that is? We're just drifting, drifting. Hey, listen, look at verse 3, please. Verse 3, the Bible says, uh, we understand verse 2, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You know what that is? That's, that's, uh, that's oaring upstream, rowing upstream, oaring upstream, rowing upstream. Uh, hey, listen, that's, uh, that's working. That's walking with God. And we know that. Verse 3, it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth 
forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, we lose our desire. Uh, one of the things is, you know, some of the signs of, of drifting is uh, a, a de- loss of a desire for the things of God. Uh, a, 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 Uh, not thinking about that and not caring about it even sometimes. When we lose our desire from the word of God, we're drifting. Take your Bible, if you would, please turn to the book of Mark, chapter 1. Mark, chapter 1. Mark, chapter 1, please. Look what it says here. Just a reminder. Um, you know, in, in the book of, uh, well, in the Old Testament, how many times did the Lord tell his children, don't forget, don't forget. In fact, before they crossed into the promised land, he, he went through a whole, he went through the whole, just reminds them over and over and over again how God delivered them out of Egypt and how they walked through the Red Sea and how he, how he destroyed the enemies and how he provided manna and how he provided water. He said, just don't forget. Don't forget the Lord. And uh, if not, we'll drift. We'll drift. Whenever they forgot God, the Bible said, uses that term, they forgot God. And then they would get into other things. Um, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. The Bible says, and in the morning, rising up a great way, a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and did what? And prayed. Do we do that? Did we used to do that? Um, I'll tell you one thing. If we used to do that and we don't do that now, we're drifting. We're drifting. Uh, We're drifting downstream. We're not drifting upstream. We're, We're getting further from God, and that should bother us. We should, that should concern us. Hey, listen, if you have people that are, that you teach, that you love, that, that love you, um, we should, we should not want to drift for that reason. But more than that, um, we should want our God. We should want to be close to God. Look at chapter six, please. Chapter six. In chapter 6, in verse 46, the Bible says here, And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to do what? To pray. You know, you think about this. He got up, uh, he got up early in the morning. The Bible says he got up early in the morning and went to a solitary place. You know what that is? That's effort, right? Uh, to get up early in the morning, he got up a, at a time he would maybe wouldn't have normally been, been up, and he went to a solitary place. He went to a place he wouldn't maybe normally be there at that time of day, but he did that to pray. And then we just read that uh, he, sent, he sent them away. He sent them away and did did what? He went to the mountain to pray. In other words, words, he got alone again on purpose, went to a special place to what? To pray. You know what? If we used to do that and we don't do that now, um, we're drifting. And maybe you say, what do you mean I'm drifting now? Um, hey, listen, um, we don't always realize it until we realize it. 
And so all I'm saying this morning, uh, I would think at a, a day like today, if, you know, with the stuff Brother Rich is teaching and not saying the world's going to end today, but it might. But hey, listen, I will tell you this. We need God. We've always needed God, but I think it's more evident than ever right now. Uh, we need God. We need God. We need to hold on to him and, and don't let these things slip. Uh, I, I know uh, most of you pretty, pretty well, and I would, I would assume you're saved. By your testimony, you're saved. But any of us can drift. It's so easy, so easy. And, uh, hey, listen, we need the Lord today. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. Amen. And, hey, listen, uh, maybe you're not saved today. I don't know. I was telling somebody um, this morning or last night, I was talking to somebody, and, and I said, I never tell somebody they're saved. I'm never going to tell you you're saved. If you're, if you're questioning me or talking to me about this, and, and uh, I'm never going to say, well, you're saved. Only you know that. Only you know that. And, uh, hey, listen, if you're not, then please, you need to be saved today. And uh, if you're drifting, uh, hey, listen, um, just get back on. Get, pick up the paddle. Get back in. Uh, but we need God's help. Amen. Father, as we come to you this morning, uh, Lord, we're asking for your help and, and uh, blessing upon our invitation. God, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to uh, hear from you, from your word, and to be able to, uh, to come to you. And God, uh, I don't know where our hearts are this morning, but maybe, maybe we need to be saved. God, I pray that you'd help that uh, person to be saved. And God, maybe we're, maybe we're drifting some, maybe, maybe in other areas that I didn't mention this morning, but maybe we're drifting, and we know, and you've been, um, you've been helping us with this this morning to realize this. And, and God, um, our choices this morning are to keep drifting or to do something about it. And God, we pray that you'd help us with that. With their heads bowed this morning, let me ask you this. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor Connor, um, I, God spoke to my heart and I know I'm drifting in an area or two and, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to. And I asked the Lord to help me this morning. I'd like to just uh, uh, raise my hand before the Lord and just say, yes, Lord, I hear you. And, and that's me. Would you slip your hand up? God spoke to my heart this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to just do business with the Lord on that. Thank you. May you put your hands down and just do business with the Lord on that. But let me ask you this. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Connor, I'm, I'm not even saved. I'm not even saved. I, I come here. I maybe sit here and have a Bible and, and look at, but, you know, but I know in my heart I'm not saved. And would you pray for me? Is there anybody at all, Pastor, anybody at all? Okay, let's stand, please, with our heads bowed. And as we have this invitation, um, you know, that's the biggest thing that could, that's the biggest thing that could hurt you is just to slip away, slip away. Father, please bless our invitation as your folks come, please. In Jesus' name we pray. With their heads bowed and as the music plays, why don't you come? Why don't you come? You know, uh, I was thinking about when Zachary was swimming out to save me. Uh, there, there were times when our kids were, were younger and they would say things to me that I would catch myself and wake up to realize where I was. Um, drifting, drifting.
the, okay, let me say it this way. The further we go, uh, we care less and less. The further we go, the further we drift, the less and less we'll read our Bible. That's just a fact. The further we go, um, the, the less and less we'll pray. They just go together. And the further we go, the faster we start going. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you, and it's been a good day, man. Okay, well, God's good. Um, and I think of just just working on a relationship with God, walking with God. Um, something else um, somebody said this morning, there's a difference in um, being a Christian or... or um, um, doing the Christian duty and walking with God. Serving God and walking with God are not the same thing. Service for the Lord and walking with God are not the same thing. Although, if you walk with the Lord, you should serve the Lord, but you can serve the Lord without walking with God. And, uh, and it becomes hollow and empty. Amen? I think Catherine said that. There have been good things that come out of Catherine's mouth. Amen? So, yeah. Amen. I told Kelly this morning, I was standing there back there talking to her. I said, she was taking attendance and doing all that stuff. I said, I am so hungry this morning. I said, I can't even hardly function. I don't know what it is. I'm just, are you hungry too? Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's go eat. Amen? <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, uh, you guys have a great vacation. Are you headed up the road, headed that way? Brother Rich has plans. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be fun, I'm sure. Amen. Good to have you guys. Good to meet you. I don't think I've met you before, have I? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Amen. We'll go have lunch out there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good. I'm glad y'all came. You know, when you when you when you get to see people in their environment, it helps and. To see that, though. Brother Rich is a good guy, huh? Kindred spirit. Amen. Amen. So you guys are newlyweds, though, right? Almost two years. Uh, yeah, that's still new. Amen. It's still wonderful. Amen. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Good, good, good. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, Brother Warren, good to have you guys back. So Sarah graduated, and that is, I'll tell you what, Sarah worked real hard for that. So praise the Lord. And um, praise God, just like, whew. So how you doing, Mrs. Warren? Okay. Yeah, so the kids are, are not here right now. So that's different, right? Well, amen. God bless you guys. All right. Well, uh, Brother Warren, would you uh, dismiss us a prayer this morning, please? Okay.